The Bodhisattva goes on to say, I shall save all those living beings who make their living through improper livelihoods, getting them to dwell in purity of body, speech, and mind, those three commas, and not live in the dramas of improper death and livelihoods anymore. They ought to dwell in proper livelihood and have proper knowledge and proper views in everything they do. He further makes the following reflection. The Bodhisattva on the ground of living filth makes another contemplation, which is this. All living beings constantly pursue the three poisons and the various afflictions accordingly rage. The three poisons of greed, hatred, and stupidity confuse people and make them upside down. Why is it that from the limitless compass to the present they have not become Buddhas? It's just because they have greed, hatred, and stupidity. Our greed is insatiable. We figure, the more the better, because we have this greed, we don't have any wisdom. Lacking wisdom, then we get angry. And people who get angry are just stupid. So greed, hatred, and stupidity are known as the three poisons. People who are greedy are very difficult to teach and transform. Because you have the three poisons inside you, all kinds of afflictions are produced inside too. These afflictions are like a huge blazing fire. They do not understand how to seek with determination the experience essential for escape. They are not able to seek ways to get out, unable to make up their minds to transcend the three realms, to live suffering and attain bliss. They are unable to use various expedient drama dolls to escape from the three realms. The Bodhisattva says, I should cause them to extinguish the great blaze of afflictions. We have 84,000 kinds of afflictions and the Bodhisattva wants us to escape from the bonfire of afflictions and settle in the place of pure coolness nirvana to settle down in the state of non-production and non-extinction which is that of nirvana to satisfy to the four virtues of nirvana permanence, bliss, true self, purity he further makes the following reflection all living beings are covered with the heavy darkness of stupidity and the thick membrane of false views. They are covered up by the blackness of stupidity and false views, which are like a thick growth. They are, as it were, cataracts on their eyes. And so they enter the dense shade of thick forest. Entering into a thick forest with a dense shade means their afflictions are just too many, like a crowded wood, and so they lose the light of wisdom, which they had to begin with. They travel on dangerous roads in the widened mist. They wander through wilds where there are wolves, tigers, panthers, bears, and lions, all kinds of wild beasts, which is extremely dangerous and give rise to evil views. They start having all kinds of evil outlooks. I should cause them to obtain the unobstructed. I should save those kinds of living beings so that they obtain an unobstructed state of perfect inner penetration, the pure wisdom eye, so they know the real mark of all dharmas, so that they have a pure, the pure eye of wisdom and are able to even mind and understand the true natural mark of all dharmas, the mark of true actuality and such needs and do not follow others teachings so that they do not have to wait wait for people to teach them in order to understand they themselves can on their own enlighten to that kind of state question from audience drama master you were saying there were 84,000 illnesses and 84,000 cures in Buddhism and that the teacher has to find the right, the right one. But how does one know if one has found the right teacher? Answer. Establish merit, establish virtue, and establish written works. If you establish enough merit, 
then you have you very naturally will meet a true and actual good knowing advisor. But if you do not have enough merit and virtue, even if you meet a good knowing advisor, you will not recognize the person. And so the first requirement for people who study Buddhism is not to do any evil, but to offer up all good conduct. If you have virtuous conduct, then you will spontaneously meet a good knowing advisor. If you don't have enough and you meet one, you won't recognize that advisor. To talk of 84,000 Dharma doors being used to cure 84,000 illnesses is a comprehensive way of speaking. To speak in general terms, it means you need to get rid of greed, hatred, and stupidity. Put to rest greed, hatred, and stupidity. Diligently cultivate precepts, samadhi, and wisdom. That's what you have to do. Question. Is there any relationship between déjà vu experiences and schizophrenia and enlightenment in higher states of mysticism? Answer. If you take drugs and go insane, then that's an illness. Is not becoming enlightened. Question: Psychologists are experimenting and finding that crazy people sometimes have a spiritual penetrations and know things through the use of their wisdom, not through the senses. Answer: You can't call that insanity. It's just that they were stiff and cold, and now they are starting to thaw. In most cases where they recognize situations, they have had some connection with those kinds of states in the past which enables them to recognize them now. For example, if you have a friend you recognized yesterday, if you meet that friend today, you will probably remember that person's first and last name is the same principle. Question, I would like to ask the about to common on the little self, the greater self, and the alone involvement of the ego. Answer the involvement. Involvement of the ego, the view of a self, is also the mark of a self. If you have a view of self, you have a mark of a self. If you have a mark of the self, you will have the mark of others. With the mark of others, you will have the mark of living beings. To the mark of living beings, there is a mark of having lifespans. Those are known as the four marks. The view of a self is because there is first a self. However, that self is something absolutely not true. Most people say they have a self. Well, search throughout the job body. The hair is called hair. The head is called head. The ears are called ears. The eyebrows are called eyebrows. The eyes are called eyes, the nose is called the nose, the lips are called lips, the trousers even are called trousers, the arms of the body are called arms, the hands are called hands, the fingers are called fingers, and the fingernails are called fingernails. Each part has its own name. If you count from the top of the head to the toes of the feet, each part has a name of its own. But what part would you say is called self? Take a look, see if you can find it. You won't be able to, and since there is no self, how can you have a view of self? It's because of the attachment of living beings. We are attached and say, this is mine that belongs to me. But this body basically is not your own. It's simply that you mistake a thief for your son. You mistake the phones for the truth and say, this is mine. And because you have a self, you are selfish. You say, this house is mine, this land is mine, this gold is mine, this silver is mine, all of that is mine. All of this mine is from a single attached thought. You always think that they belong to you. If you don't hang on to them, you will lose them. If you don't hang on to them, sooner or later you yourself are going to die. And when you do die, you will have to put them all down. They will all be gone. Then where did yourself run off to? 
It's because we people have a self that we think of what will benefit ourselves and don't pay attention to other people. That's why the world is getting worse every day and why people's minds are worse every day. It's just from having that attachment, that attachment which arms people to the point to death. All of you think it over since there is not even a self. How can there be a view of self or mark of self? The great self is an attachment. You could say that the small self is having no attachment except, except a little bit. If you get rid of that attachment to self, then your mark of self will be emptied. At that time, all of empty space and the drama realm unites with one's own self-nature. That's what's called without self and without others. One contemplates at ease, with no emptiness and no form. One sees the first come one. I don't know if what I said was right or not. If I, if you felt what you heard was not right, then forget it. If you felt it was right, if it's the way, then walk it. If it's not the way, then go back. I myself don't understand very much either, so don't take what I say as golden proclamations and jet records. Question: Could you please relate this to the ego and healing and to the energies from the universe? Answer: In healing, you should not have the thought of a self. Don't have the idea. I am healing people. You should think. In wanting to heal people, I should see other people as being of the same substance as myself. People are just me, and I am just people. If people are sick, then I am sick. When I cure people, I am curing myself. That way, you will have less of an attachment. When bodhisattvas benefit all living beings, they do not think of themselves as benefiting living beings. When the bodhisattva has rescued. All living beings. He himself does not think that he has saved a single living being. This is what is known as acting as if not acting, sweeping away all dramas, leaving behind all marks. When you heal people, if you say I healed pe- that person, or I used some kind of energy to cure him, you are just having a false thought. That too is false thinking. If you don't have false thoughts, basically there is not one thing. So where can dust alight?